Hello and welcome to worship on this Pentecost Sunday, May what twenty third, two thousand twenty one. So excited to get to spend this time in worship with you, especially on uh, this special day as we celebrate Pentecost, that day where the Spirit came and descended upon the disciples like tongues of fire, filling them with holy breath and giving them all they needed to go and to share with the world the gospel message of Jesus Christ. What a special day to get to celebrate. If you're joining us in person today, we have some extra special things happening as well for uh, during our in-person outdoor service. We will be baptizing five people, confirming six people into membership, and welcoming two families into the church as well. It is such a beautiful day. And I'm so glad that we get to spend it with you. You'll learn more about um, those baptizees and confirmands here in a little bit. But for now, take a moment and prepare yourself for worship. Maybe say a quick prayer. Maybe take a few deep breaths. Let that holy breath that is the Spirit of God enter you and settle you. Maybe it's reaching out to a friend or a loved one that you used to worship alongside and miss and just tell them, hey, I'm worshiping right now and I'm thinking about you. Whatever you need to do to prepare yourself for worship, do it now. And while you're at it, if you would please go to wimberlyumc.org connect and fill out our connect card. This is our way of just checking in and seeing who's here, seeing how we can reach out better to you and to celebrate the fact that we get to worship together. After you've done that, um, let's, let's continue in worship. Let's go to God in prayer. Holy God, we thank you for this time of worship. We thank you that just as you filled those disciples so long ago, God, every breath we breathe in is you filling us as well. May we meet you here in miraculous, unexpected ways. And God, may we take your holy breath out into the world and share it with everyone. Receive this worship, Lord. This we pray in your name. Amen.
glory of your goodness let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory As we come to the time of offering, we remember especially on this day that we are called to be the offering to God, that we who have received the Spirit of God are sent into the world to share the good news of Jesus Christ with everyone and to bring God's kingdom to this place. So during this prayer, ask God how, how you are called to give yourself an offering today. Let us pray. Holy God, receive now our offering. May you use it in mighty and miraculous ways. May we see how our gifts shape and change the world around us. And may we celebrate with you in seeing your kingdom come. All this we pray in the name of Jesus the Christ the one who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who is in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Taunts the hearts of men. We can feel it from within the beauty of it all, the mystery, the swelling of a voice, a rising sea. of it all 
We want to take time to recognize and celebrate what God is doing in the lives of our students here at WUMC. Congratulations to Jaden Bowman, Phoenix Kale, Dexter Kale, Paxton Rigby Cockle, Gibson Rigby Cockle, and August Rigby Cockle on their baptism. We are so excited for you and are ready to walk alongside you on your journey of faith. We also have students who have committed the past 12 weeks to confirmation class. To our confirmands, Jaden Bowman, Phoenix Kale, Dexter Kale, Paxton Rigby Cockle, and Scarlett Shaler, congratulations. We are so proud of the commitment and desire you have shown to know Jesus deeper. Storm can shake my inmost core. 
As we prepare to hear from God's word, let us pray. Holy God, open our ears and open our hearts to your message today. May your spirit, may your breath fill us and inspire us that we might go and change this world in your name. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 17. Hear this, the story of Pentecost. When Pentecost Day arrived, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound from heaven like the howling of a fierce wind filled the entire house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be individual flames of fire alighting on each one of them. They were all filled with with the holy breath and began to speak in other languages as the breath enabled them to speak. Now there were pious Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. When they heard this sound, a crowd gathered. They were mystified because everyone heard them speaking in their native languages. They were surprised and amazed, saying, Look, Aren't all of these people who are speaking Galileans, every one of them? How then can each of us hear them speaking in their own language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, as well as residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and regions of Libya bordering Cyrene, and even visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the mighty works of God in our own languages. They were all surprised and bewildered. Some asked each other, what does this mean? Others jeered at them, saying, they're just full of new wine. But Peter stood with the other 11 apostles He raised his voice and declared, Judeans and everyone living in Jerusalem, know this, listen carefully to my words. These people aren't drunk as you expect or as you suspect. After all, it's only nine in the morning. Rather, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour my breath on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young will see visions. Your elders will dream dreams. Even upon my servants, men and women, I will pour my breath in those days and they will prophesy. I will cause wonders to occur in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and a cloud of smoke. The sun will be changed into darkness. The moon will be changed into blood before the great and spectacular day of the Lord's coming. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, if you would please... 
Let's just take in a deep breath together. In, out. There's something calming about a deep breath when it feel, feels like your lungs are, are filled completely. And then you can just let it all out. In fact, I, I don't like it when for whatever reason I cannot take a deep breath. Maybe it's because of allergies and I'm all stuffed. Maybe it's because one of those so humid days that it feels like you're breathing in water. Or maybe it's, it's when it's so cold outside that it, it hurts to inhale at all. I don't like it when I can't breathe deep. Because breath, breath is life. I think that's one of the reasons that I love the, the story from Ezekiel 37 so much. Ezekiel and the Valley of Dry Bones. It's my all-time favorite scripture story. And I think one of the reasons is because of how important a role breath plays. Hear this story from the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses 1 through 14. The Spirit of God took hold of me and brought me to a valley that was full of bones. I was led back and forth through this valley, and I, I saw that it was full of these very dry, very brittle bones. Then the Lord God spoke to me and said, Ezekiel, human one. Can these bones live again? And I said, O oh, sovereign Lord, you alone know the answer. Then God spoke to me again saying, prophesy, Ezekiel. Prophesy to the bones and say to them, hear, O oh, bones, the message of your God. This is what your sovereign Lord says to you. I will breathe into you. and you will live. I will attach tendons to you, cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you in skin, and you will live. I will put my breath inside of you. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I, I, I prophesied just as God told me, and, and and as I was speaking, there was a, a noise, a, a rattling sound. And as I watched, bones came together, bone on bone. Tendons and flesh appeared and skin covered them. But there was no breath. Then the Lord spoke to me again and said, prophesy to the breath, Ezekiel. Prophesy and say to it, come, O breath, from the four winds and enter into these bodies that they may live again. So I did it just as God told me. And as I spoke, breath, <sighs> breath entered them and they lived. They stood a vast army of people. And the Lord said to me, Ezekiel, the people of Israel are these dry bones. Day and night they cry out saying, our bones are, are brittle. Our hope is lost. We are completely cut off. So prophesy to them. And say to them, hear, O Israel, the message of your God. This is what your sovereign Lord says to you. O my people, I will open up your graves of exile. 
and raise you from them. I will bring you home to Jerusalem and you will know that I am God. When I open up your graves and and bring you up from them, I will put my breath in you. And you will live. I will bring you home. And then, then you'll know that I keep my promises. I, the Lord, have spoken. I love the story. And I think one of the reasons that I love it is because of the truth that's present in it, that breath is life. And breath is a gift that comes from God. In this story, it is given to those without. It is given to those who are dead, and they are no longer dead. They are now alive again. In the Jewish faith, our our Sisters and brothers and siblings of uh, Jewish faith today even still believe this, that life starts at that first breath. The first time that breath enters into your body, that is when you live. And so this story, this story that starts as one about desolation and disconnection in a valley of dry bones, When the breath enters, it becomes a story of reconnection, of resurrection, of life. For breath is our connection to God. And breath is life. This is the promise of hope that is made in Ezekiel 37. And friends, it is the promise fulfilled at Pentecost Day. That promise that was was secured and, and, and given to us by Jesus Christ is fulfilled when the Holy Spirit, the Holy Breath, descends upon and fills up the disciples. That's the miracle in the story. It's not the tongues of fire as much as I love fire. It's not the fact that the disciples can speak in different languages and be heard proclaiming the greatness of God in different languages. No, the miracle of this story is breath inhabiting the people of God. For in this The people of God who were dry bones, who were disconnected, who were desolated, who were dead, are now revived. Breath comes back in and breathes new life, not into individuals, but into the people of God. And they live because of it. And because of that, On that day, that day alone, 3,000 people were added to the numbers of the church because the Spirit, the breath, came down. And as they breathed it in and breathed it out, that Spirit spread from person to person and changed the very world around them. Everyone was changed. And my friends, that same breath that 2,000 some odd years ago filled the disciples, it fills us as well. That Holy Spirit, that Holy Breath is ours. So breathe in again, my friends. (sighs) Breathe in that which fills, that which inspires. Breathe in that which revives, that which resurrects. Breathe in that which allows us to exhale and exude 
life and world-changing spirit and breath into this world. For that breath that is life is God given to you, to me, to all. Let's celebrate this breath today. And with every breath we breathe, may we praise God. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Breath. <sighs> Amen. Sweet 
fire fall down Fire fall down On a sweet day And as we seek fire fall down Fire fall down On a sweet day Fire fall down, boy, oh, fire fall down on a sweet trail. Oh, you fire fall down, fire fall down, God, you fire fall down on a sweet pray. Lord, we ask you fire fall down. Fire fall down on us, we pray. As we seek, fire fall down, if fire fall down on us, we pray. Friends, hear this benediction. Go from this place breathing in that breath that is life. Go from this place breathing in and out the holy breath of God. And go from this place changing the world with every breath. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of that holy breath. Amen.